Unnatural Insomnia. Entry 1. It's been a couple days since I moved into the new house, and man, does it feel empty. Especially waking up alone. Having absolute silence fill the air only, disturbed by disruptions of your own making. Nobody to forcibly interrupt your peaceful slumber. Yet again, I still have to keep a decent sleeping pattern for work, but that is besides the point. This whole being alone in a house all to myself situation is going to take some adapting to, but I know this will be a hell of a lot better than staying with my parents for another three years. Entry 2. Adapting to a new living space is proving quite a difficult challenge to overcome. The week I've spent in this house has proved itself to be one of the most comforting weeks I've had in a long while. Though the wooden floor of the house continuously creaks at certain periods during the morning and even in the middle of the night, I want to get that sorted out soon as it's causing me to stay up later than I already need to be. Suddenly jolting awake at 2am in the morning to be greeted by agonizingly painful screeching coming from the floor as if it were an immense pain. From what I could hear, after a minute or two it seems like the floors would buckle into themselves before returning to their silent state. I really need to get that checked out soon. Entry 3 I woke up yesterday in a headache-induced, nauseating haze. There was a loud shriek that came from the living room part of my house. Once I got out of my bed to check it out, I found that the wooden floor was busted, with a large gaping hole sticking out like a sore thumb, revealing soft and fertile dirt accompanied with claw markings beneath the floor. Peeling back some parts of the floor allowed me to notice more of these hidden claw markings. The hole is quite large, almost the size of a small child. I honestly would be horrified right now if it weren't for the fact that I'm so tired. Two weeks have passed already, but I've only managed to get three to four hours of sleep every night. Perhaps it was the floor creaking every day for the past week or so, pressure from trying to maintain my job and keep a steady income, or some form of insomnia, which is most likely the case. I'll just get some sleep medicine to deal with it, seek out whatever got into my house. Entry 4 I can't fucking sleep. It's been six days since I slept for at least a small amount of time, maybe like an hour or two, but now I'm exhausted and frustrated that I still have to go get up at 6am just to get on time to work, hoping I don't accidentally crash my fucking car into the pavement because I can barely keep myself up. My eyelids feel like anvils attempting to shut down on my eyes, just trying to finally rest, but I just can't. Medicine doesn't help with the situation either. I literally drunk the whole fucking bottle, yet my relentless urge to fall asleep has not been fulfilled. Entry 5. Another three days of not being able to rest. I'm also starting to have hallucinations, hearing the quiet padding of footsteps when I'm not walking, doors creaking open by themselves, even the faint outline of something. A creature, perhaps. I need help. I need sleep. I quit my job today. It just wasn't worth the risk of my own life trying to get there on time. I spent almost the entirety of my day at home now, but tomorrow I'm going to visit my doctor. Moving is becoming more of a difficulty each day as I feel I'm carrying another me on my back all the time. Entry 6 I wasted my time visiting the doctor's office. The voice of the doctor came in parts to me. I couldn't collect it all in one sitting, but I know that he mentioned I had a rare form of insomnia and asked a few questions about my condition. He, well even I, still don't know the cause of it. No leads, no connections, nothing. I reluctantly gave answers to his questions, however still holding on to whatever bit of hope I had left, that what I was going through could be fixed. My hopes were crushed then, as I left with a pill-filled bottle, and an unsatisfied feeling lingering in my gut. I arrived back at my house, not actually taking the car, but walking instead over to the doctor's office. Sure, fumbling around on the sidewalk may have made me look like an idiot, but a much better idea than driving into oncoming traffic. While I was inside in front of my house, as I approached the door, I saw it again. The creature, looking through the curtains of my window. Against the white color of my curtains, it stuck out like a sore thumb, and I was able to make out some features of it. Thinned out body with its skin looking more as if it was wearing a leather coat. Large gape and void where their eyes should resonate, and its unhinged jaw that stretched to the depths that surpassed the size of the window it had been staring at me from. The creature fell back behind the curtains fading away into the walls. I'm afraid to go back into the house now. I'm afraid of whatever the fuck has been living alongside me for the past four weeks now. And I'm afraid that no one will believe me. Entry 7 
A silhouette loomed over me while I attempted to stay comfy, distracting myself from the immense pain I was suffering due to sleep deprivation was the abomination of the creature's faint outline. Out from his unproportional jaw came a sound, the likes of static. As my eyes widened, the horrific beast faded out of my view, although it has left its mark. Multiple scars and scratches across my skin, some cutting deep into my flesh. The pain suddenly surged through my body, letting the blood leak onto my bedsheets as I stumbled my body to the bathroom, making a makeshift bandage to patch my wound. It's been hunting me. I'm living next to a creature that wants to kill me. I hear the static again and I think it's near, approaching closer. Entry 8. Nobody believes outrageous claims without evidence. My situation is unexplainable in nature, but I know for a fact that this thing isn't natural. I need visual proof of this thing's existence. I ran over to the nearby store with all the money I have left. Currently it's dwelling at a rapid pace, but that's besides the point. I purchased a camera and made my way back home. Calling it my home, however, would be misleading the truth. It's our home. An unwelcomed guest has stepped in, and I needed to warn others about it. When I first stepped into my house, I immediately turned the camera on and started recording. I searched for the creature in my home until I started to fumble with the modes on the camera, switching it to a sort of night vision mode, then I had noticed a bony foot on the corner of my camera's view. Tilting the camera towards the foot, I was met with a horrifying discovery and the true depth of the creature's entire look. I staggered back, falling onto my back as the creature had been standing just inches away from my face. I ran over and locked myself in my room. Anxiety bursted into my head along with the hyperventilating and sleep deprivation. I just collapsed onto the floor, curling into a ball and crying to myself. I don't know how much more I can take of this. I have no idea how long I will last. I can hear alterations between scratching and knocking at my door now. It's trying to get in. Entry 9. I'm bleeding. Scars on my stomach and parts of my neck are freshly made, but I've kept myself locked in here. Nothing has got in nor out. Which leads me to one conclusion. The conclusion in which I'm afraid to answer, but I know is the case. There is no point anymore. My body feels so heavy. It's painful to move. It's painful to live. I'll succumb to the pain, letting myself rest for eternity. This will be my final note. I shall finally rest. Goodbye.